Hey everybody, Josh Garrison here again, and in this video, we're going to cover integrating your HubSpot CRM with Apollo. If you have Salesforce, we have a different video covering integrating Salesforce. So with that said, let's dive right in. We're gonna go again to the top right-hand corner of our screen to the settings wheel. And on the left-hand side of our screen, we are going to go to integrations. Now we have a variety of integrations you can choose from. And if you scroll down and you haven't done this yet, you'll find Salesforce and HubSpot listed here. If you have a different CRM that isn't one of Salesforce or HubSpot, I do recommend that you take a look at our Zapier integration, which will allow you basically to get data from your CRM to Apollo and vice versa without having a direct connection. That said, we do support HubSpot and Salesforce right out of the box. And in this instance, I've already connected my HubSpot account. So I'm going to go ahead and click into that. If you haven't connected your account yet, it's pretty straightforward. Just hit link account. It'll prompt you to log into HubSpot. You will need to have proper permissions in HubSpot to allow an integration, and then it will land you on this page. Once you get to this page, there's a few things I'd like to walk you through. The first is record visibility. This just allows you to decide whether you want your users to search for your HubSpot records in Apollo, or whether you want them to go into HubSpot to do a search for the contacts in your HubSpot instance. If you scroll down, you have the ability to force a sync between HubSpot and Apollo, where you can pull all of your HubSpot contacts into Apollo or all of your HubSpot companies into Apollo. You would want to do this manually if, for example, you had come in for the first time and you configured this push setting, which we'll talk about now. So push settings are the ability to uh, push data from Apollo to HubSpot. So it will push any newly created contact to your CRM and then update them whenever a field in Apollo changes. So let's say your team is doing prospecting in Apollo. They build a list, they add that list to a sequence. Any when they save a, that person to their list and use a credit to get their contact information, if you were to enable this, this would save them to HubSpot. One thing you will want to keep in mind is that HubSpot charges you based on the number of marketable contacts in your HubSpot database. So if you don't turn on uh, some kind of filter in HubSpot or a workflow to mark all of the people pushed this way from Apollo to HubSpot, you could start seeing your cost for HubSpot increasing if they're being marked by default as marketable. Something to keep in mind. If you were to enable this, this would not retro retroactively push contacts from Apollo to HubSpot. In order to do that, you need to come in and initiate a sync manually. So we're going to go ahead for our purposes and leave this off. And instead, we're only going to create contacts in HubSpot if they reach certain stages in Apollo, which I'll cover in a second. Basically, this is a way for us to control our integration a little bit more. And for example, instead of pushing people to our HubSpot instance, as soon as we prospect them, we would only push them to our HubSpot instance once we book a meeting with them or once they reply to our email and say that they're interested. We have a little bit more granularity if we use this route. Now we also have the ability to push accounts into our CRM and I'm actually going to show you how to do that. So I came into my HubSpot instance and I clicked on the settings wheel. From here I'm going to scroll on the left hand side to properties and now I'm under the contact object and I'm in the contact properties. So what I'm gonna do now is create a property. I think out of the box HubSpot gives you original source, but that's not a customizable field as far as I know. I think you can add like options in the pick list, but I'm just gonna go ahead and create one. This is an object contact. The group is going to be under contact information. The label will be source. And I'll say, where do we get this? And we can then hit next. And this is a field type. It does need to be a text field. If we go back into Apollo, you'll see that it must be a text field and not read only. So it's going to look like this. We go next and we can set any kind of limits that we want or whatever we want to do there. And we can create this. So now when I go back into my Apollo instance, I'm going to choose a source and you'll see this is the field. So I have the source field here. I have the source field here. I can connect that and Apollo is going to be the source. So if I am pushing records from Apollo into HubSpot, I can now see that it came from Apollo and I can go ahead and hit save. Now I can go ahead and repeat that exact same process for accounts if I wanted to, but I would come back into HubSpot and instead of creating a contact property, obviously now I'm going to be creating a company property. Accounts in Apollo is synonymous with 
companies in HubSpot. Before we move on to talk about stages, I do want to cover some of our mappings. So we have stages here and I'm saving those for its own video because there's a lot you can do with stages. But what's important to note are the default fields and the custom fields. So there are default fields in Apollo and fields that you have on the contact record in HubSpot. And we have to decide how we want those two things to play with each other. We auto populate as many of these as we can for you, like first name and last name. But the setting you wanna keep an eye on is over here on the right, auto overwrite and auto fill. So if you want Apollo to auto overwrite the value, if what's in HubSpot is different than what's in Apollo, you can turn that on. One thing to keep in mind is things that you manually edit will always have precedence over things that we update automatically. So if you manually change somebody's name, phone number, email address, something like that, we're not going to overwrite it. But in every other instance, what you select here is going to make the determination for you. The other option is just to autofill. So let's say you have a value in your CRM already, but you pull new contact information from Apollo. Do you want that to fill in if it's missing in HubSpot? I recommend you go through these and any of the fields that you have by default, you can configure them here. And then you can do the exact same thing for your custom fields. So these are all the custom fields that I have created in Apollo, and I have to map them to the contact fields that I want in HubSpot. <laughs> <laughs>